Hi, I'm Paul Kilgan from GK Tuition, and in this video, I want to talk to you about complex numbers. Now, the question that I've chosen to go through here is 2019 Paper 1, Question 5. In the first part of this question, we're introduced to the quadratic equation z squared plus pz plus q. We're told that one of the roots of this quadratic is 3 plus 2i. Well, most importantly, we're told that p and q are elements of or. Or in other words, p and q are real numbers. And we're asked to find the value of p and the value of q. Now, this is really, really important. Obviously, it's a quadratic equation, which means it only has two roots. One of the roots is 3 plus 2i. There's two types of quadratic equations that we could get here. This is really important. The number in front of z squared is, z squared is 1, so it's real. The number in front of z is p, and it's real. The number on its own is q, and it's real. So because all three coefficients are real, that means the roots are conjugates of each other. So I know if they tell me one of the roots is 3 plus 2i, straight away you know the other root is a conjugate. The conjugate of 3 plus 2i, you just change the sign of the imaginary one, it's 3 minus 2i. That only applies because 1, p, and q are all real numbers. It's only because the coefficients are real. So now this makes life a lot easier. I know two of the roots, 3 plus 2i and 3 minus 2i. Once you know the two roots of a quadratic equation, if it's complex numbers you're dealing with, the easiest way to come up with the quadratic is to use this formula. This formula comes up in a lot in the algebra, it comes up in the algebra section in a lot of the books and in a lot of the notes, but just be aware it's more applicable for this kind of question. Every quadratic equation, whether we're dealing with algebra or we're dealing with complex numbers, can be written in this form. It's z squared minus z times the sum of the roots plus the product of the roots. In other words, if I just add the roots together, I'll figure out what should go here. If I just multiply the roots by each other, I'll figure out what should go here. So let's just do the maths for that now. So I've worked this out, it's relatively straightforward. The sum of the roots means you just add up your two roots. 3 plus 2i plus 3 minus 2i. The two i's cancel each other out. 3 and 3 is 6. If I get the product of the roots, once we multiply it out here, we end up with 13. So originally we said that every quadratic can be written as z squared minus z times the sum plus the product. So let's just write that out now. That means that the, this quadratic is z squared minus the sum, which is 6, times z, so it's minus 6z, plus the product, which is 13. So the quadratic equation is z squared minus 6z plus 13. But be very careful and always make sure you answer exactly what was asked. The question asked you to find the value of p and find the value of q. So the last thing you should write down is that p is equal to minus 6 and that q is equal to 13. That, in fact, that's your answer. In b part 1 of this question, we're given the complex number v is equal to 2 minus 2 root 3 i. And we're asked to write it in the form of or cos theta plus i sine theta, or in other words, to write it in polar form. Now you have to realize that it's also asked you to get your values between theta is between 0 and 2 pi, or in other words, you have to use radians rather than degrees when you're working out your angle. So in order to get polar form, there's two things we need to find. The first thing is relatively straightforward. It's or, which represents the modulus. And the formula for the modulus is the square root of a squared plus b squared, where a is the first number and b is the number in front of i. So in that case, my modulus just works out as 2 squared plus minus 2 root 3 to be squared. That works out as six, root 16, or in other words, 4. It's far more complicated to work out our, our theta, which is called our argument. So in order to do that, you need to draw yourself a diagram. So what you want to do is draw yourself uh, an argan diagram where the, where the horizontal line represents the real numbers, the vertical line represents the imaginary numbers. So rather than an x and a y axis, this is a real and an imaginary axis. And now it's only kind of rough work here, so you roughly want to draw this. The real number in this case is 2. So I'm going to say, right, well, 2 is roughly out here somewhere. It's in, in my mind, this is where 2 is. And minus 2 root 3. Well, minus 2 root 3, that's the imaginary axis. And it's going to be down here. Uh, let's say that that's minus 2 root 3. It doesn't have to be accurate. It's literally just for yourself. So on this argand diagram, if I wanted to plot V, V is roughly here. 
And now what I need to do is form a right angle triangle. And in order to do that, you want to join V to the origin. So you want to join V straight to the origin. And then what you want to do is draw a line straight up to the real axis. So I draw a line to the real axis, and this is a right angle triangle. Now, the angle that we're trying to find in this case is the angle that it makes with the real axis. So in this case, I'm just going to call this the angle A. I want to work out what that is. Now, we're dealing with junior cert trigonometry here. We have a right angle triangle. We know some of the sides, and we're trying to find the value of the angle. So you should realize that in this right angle triangle, the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. Clearly, that distance is 2 root 3. Remember, it's not minus 2 root 3 because it's a distance. I'm not concerned with the signs here. It's always going to be positive because it's a distance. I know the distance from there to there is 2. So if you just look at this right angle triangle now, that's the angle A. I know the opposite and I know the adjacent. If I know opposite and adjacent, clearly I'm going to use my tan function. I can say that the tan of the angle A is opposite over adjacent, in this case 2 root 3 over 2. So in that case now I can simplify that and I can say that tan A is equal to the square root of 3. Now to get A on its own I get tan inverse of root 3. Make sure your calculator is in radians or this is actually one of my this is actually one of my special angles so I can just read it straight off my log tables. Whether you use your calculator or you read it off your log tables, the angle A works out as pi over 3. Remember, pi over 3 is basically the same as 60 degrees. However, I'm not looking for the angle A. The angle I'm looking for is theta, which is the argument. Now, let's just look at our diagram here. The angle we're looking for is the angle that the complex number makes when the, with the positive sense of the real axis. In other words, if I start at the real axis, and I went in this direction. That's the angle that I'm looking for. I'm looking for this is my angle theta. That whole, that large angle is the angle I'm looking for. Now, just think straight back to your trigonometry to your unit circle. Okay, how, how would you usually get a value in the fourth quadrant? Usually in the fourth quadrant, you would just say that it's 360 degrees minus whatever your angle is. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Usually it'd be 360 minus your angle, or if we're dealing with radians, Instead of 360, it's 2 pi. So to work out what my angle is, I know that a one full revolution is 2 pi. So 2 pi minus whatever A worked out as will give me theta. So to work out my theta, I can just say that it's equal to 2 pi minus pi over 3. And if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get 5 pi over 3. So now I know that my argument is 5 pi over 3. I know my modulus and I know my argument, so I can write this in polar form. So just to finish it off, I needed to write it V in the form of OR cos theta plus I sine theta. I worked out that OR, my modulus, is 4, and that theta, my argument, is 5 pi over 3. So your final answer, you just write V is equal to that. And then we can move on and look at part 2. Okay, so for the final part of this question, we're, we're told that W squared is equal to V. And we're asked the user answer to be part 1 in order to find the two possible values for W. Now... And previously we've worked out that we've got V in polar form. So if V is equal to that, W squared equals V, obviously I can say that W squared is equal to my answer to B part 1. But we're not trying to find W squared, we're trying to find W. So the next thing that we want to do is say that W is equal to all of this to the power of a half. In other words, I'm basically just getting the square root of the left hand side, the square root of the right hand side. But at this stage you have to notice a few things. If you have a complex number in polar form, to a power, then we're going to be dealing with the de Moivre's theorem. But more importantly, the power is a fraction. And if the power is a fraction, that means that there's more than one answer. If it's to the power of a half, that means there's two answers. If it was to the power of a third, that would mean there's three answers. A quarter would be four answers and so on. So in order to accommodate for the fact that we need more than one answer, we have to generalize our angle. So instead of writing our angle as 5 pi over 3, we have to rewrite it as 5 pi over 3 plus 2n pi, which is equivalent to one full revolution of the unit circle. Remember, 2 pi is the same as 360 degrees, and it's just n, which represents the number of times you go around. So all I'm doing here is generalizing my angle because the power is a fraction. And at this line with my arrow, this is where I'm actually applying de Moivre's theorem. It's relatively straightforward to apply de Moivre's theorem. It's... 
my four, which is my modulus, it just becomes four to the power of a half, which is two. So that's straightforward enough, but it's a little bit different when I deal with the angle. If I want to get all of this to the, to the power of a half, all you have to do is multiply the power by the angle. So multiplying all of this by a half, five pi over three multiplied by a half becomes five pi over six, and two n pi multiplied by a half becomes n pi. So both of my angles change like that. So in this line, I just got four to the power of a half is two. I multiplied this angle by a half and I got that, and both angles are the same. So now all I need to do is get my final answers. The question there asks me to leave my answer in the form of a plus bi, in other words, to write it in rectangular form. So what I need to do is I need to sub in two values to get my two answers. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're now gonna sub in n equals zero and then we're gonna sub in n equals one. We're gonna get two different answers and that's our final answer. Okay, so we've worked w out to, we've gotten to this point and now we know that because it was to the power of a half, I need two answers. Now I've subbed in n equals zero and n equals one but to be honest, it actually makes no difference. Like you could sub in 96 and 97, or you could sub in 212 and 213. Once you sub in two consecutive numbers, you'll get two different answers. If you weren't 100% sure on that, you could sub in like say 95, 96, and then 97. The only thing is when you got to 97, you just start getting the same answers again, because the two same answers repeat themselves again and again and again. But obviously the easiest numbers to sub in are n equals zero and n equals one. If I sub in n equals zero, my angle just becomes five pi over six. Cos of that becomes minus root three over two, and the sine of that is plus a half. I then multiply by the two outside it. My first answer is minus root three plus i. And when I did the same thing, except subbing in n equals one, my answer worked out as plus root three minus i. So there are your final answers to this question. Now, I hope all of that makes sense. If there's anything you're unsure of there, or you'd like me to explain it differently, then just let me know in class or send me an email and I'll try and just clarify it for you.